Six months of dedicated development have gone into producing this Ubuntu 22.10, the latest version of the popular Linux-based desktop operating system. Ubuntu 22.10 is codenamed the Kinetic Kudu and comes with nine months of ongoing support. In this video, I look at what new features have been added to the OS since the last release back in April. GNOME 43 takes centre stage in Ubuntu 22.10 with its new quick settings menu, the most visible user facing improvement. A single click is all it takes to enable and disable Wi-Fi, VPN, Bluetooth, nightlight, airplane mode and dark mode. Submenus make it easier to, for example, switch between different Wi-Fi connections without being punted to a different part of the UI. Shortcuts at the top of the quick settings menu give you quick access to screenshots, settings and screen lock, while options to shut down, restart, etc. are now behind the power icon at the end of the row. Many GNOME users, including this one, found switching audio device a little cumbersome in earlier versions, so GNOME developers have now made it possible to change audio output device from the quick settings menu itself. Nautilus is Ubuntu's default file manager, and in GNOME 43 it has been rebuilt using GTK4 and Libidwata. It now sports a more modern and fully responsive design, with sidebar and toolbars adapting cleanly depending on the available width. GNOME devs have also reworked the file manager's list view. Items now benefit from more spacing, and you can use rubber banding to select multiple files and folders while in list view. Redesign file and folder property windows now make it much easier to see more information about specific file types. There's also deeper integration with Ubuntu's disk management app. It's now easier to get an overview of free space of your external devices and to initiate reformatting directly from inside of Nautilus. Finally, Pro users are certain to appreciate the new open in terminal option accessible when right clicking in empty space in a directory. Another benefit of GNOME 43, the settings app is also fully responsive, which is a nice touch and very helpful if you regularly use the OS on a device with a smaller display. There's also a brand new Ubuntu desktop panel, don't get too excited, this doesn't offer any new options, but it does group together the existing preferences for Ubuntu's desktop icons extension and the Ubuntu dock. Talking of the Ubuntu dock, Ubuntu 22.10 makes it easier to see multiple windows from the same app, which doesn't affect the regular window spread you can toggle using a gesture. Ubuntu prides itself on shipping with so-called sane defaults, but there have always been a few gaps. In earlier versions of Ubuntu, you couldn't view or open WebP images out of the box. This release changes that. WebP thumbnails are now rendered in the Nautilus file manager, and you can open and load WebP images in the default image viewer. You'll no longer find a simple to-do app pre-installed on Ubuntu 22.10 as the app has been dropped. There are a trove of third-party task management tools out there in the repos should you feel you need one. GNOME developers have revamped the calendar app. It now has a UI based around a sidebar and agenda list, and the app is now totally adaptive when resizing. On the application's front, Ubuntu 22.10 replaces Gedit with GNOME's new text editing app. This is a sensible replacement as it boasts most of the same features, but with a look more fitting of the modern GNOME experience. If you do miss Gedit, you can of course install it from the repos. And of course, Ubuntu ships with updated software throughout, including the latest version of Mozilla Firefox, which is still a snap, but does now start up a little bit faster than before. You also get the latest version of LibreOffice, the productivity suite that boasts better than ever compatibility with Microsoft Office file formats. And there's the venerable Thunderbird email client on hand to cater to all your mail sending needs. Ubuntu devs dial audio support in this release up to 11 with the adoption of Pipewire as Ubuntu's default sound server. Pipewire is way less buggy than Pulse Audio, works great with Wayland, is more resource efficient and boasts better hardware compatibility with Bluetooth audio devices. Sounds good to me. Ubuntu 22.10 is powered by Linux kernel 5.19. That's not the latest version, but it does have the usual array of driver performance and security improvements. And this kernel version will be backported to Ubuntu 22.04 in the next point release. So that's Ubuntu 22.10 in a nutshell, an iterative improvement on the recent LTS release, with the addition of GNOME 43 and Pipewire being the standout stars. If you're eager to test the latest and greatest, then the interim releases are certainly where it's at.